If you Google body positivity, uh, or the body positivity movement, uh, it's a sociological idea to make people um, feel good about their bodies, no matter what shape their body is in, <clears throat> and trying to change the society's judgments on people's uh, body. Uh, and it has its pros and cons. Um, generally, it gets attacked quite a lot because it can be considered as it's promoting unhealthy diets, unhealthy body shapes, unhealthy uh, behaviours, um, not promoting healthy changes in diet, not promoting realistic um, attitudes towards your current body position if you're in an unhealthy situation. It's not just for people who are overweight, it's also for people who are underweight um, as well. And uh, <clears throat> The body positivity movement, I can understand why it gets a lot of heat um, for for some of its more infamous um, media outlets. You know, you know, it's really shit, like some people who are m morbidly obese, we are very confident in themselves, but almost denying the unhealthy effects of uh, the condition that they put their body in. So I can understand that. But there are aspects where I think that teaching body confidence uh, can be hugely uh, beneficial for for not just the people who are maybe losing weight um, or gaining weight, depending on where you are on the spectrum of, of healthy weight, um, but also for society in general in terms of uh, uh, the medical bills that might be incurred through people in unhealthy weights. Um, the the reason I come along to this is that there's a person I follow on uh, Facebook uh, for a while, uh, David, who was on the Dr. Phil show recently because he has um, got quite big again. <laughs> uh, he's up around something huge, um, 600 pounds, and... He it's painful for him to even sit for more than fifteen minutes. Uh, he can barely walk, um, and he, he's effectively slowly killing himself um, through overeating. He doesn't. He he was the person that was on the six hundred fifty pound version um, program before, where he lost a huge amount of weight uh, and got looking lean. Um, but there was there's a tiny bit which is probably the last. 15 seconds of uh, this advert for the Dr. Phil show, which I think is the most depressing part of it all. Um, so in other words, here you won't have him complaining, saying, oh, I gained all my weight because of uh, metabolic slowdown and because uh, I was metabolically damaged because I lost weight. He's not going to give any of that. He lost weight naturally um, and effectively. And he puts his uh, reason for gain it all because he eats like a pound and a half of cheese a day, lies in his bed all day, does almost nothing, gets injured because he's so heavy getting out of the bath, he think he broke his thigh at one point, couldn't walk, in depression. He also suffers from severe depression from uh, historical uh, issues. Um, but... Uh, you know, he's not blaming it on anything else other than it's his own eating uh, going on here. But here, uh, let's hear what we've got to say. He says, I'm his only hope. So what caused David to gain all of his weight back? Well, listen to really this. Really, his weight back plus more. By uh, 2003, I weighed 630 pounds. Oof. I reached out to a local news channel. and They got me in contact with a personal trainer, and we ended up at... Uh, look at what he turned into! Amazing! So when you look at the difference, uh, there to fresh cut, looking good... 229 pounds. Uh, 229 pounds, so just over 100 kilograms uh, in weight. He's 6 foot 2, so that is... Bingo, where you want to be. And just like, fantastic. To you, to me, to the average person looking at this, you must be looking at it going, wow, he must feel amazing. What an achievement. What a great thing he's done for his, himself, his health, uh, his physical ability, being able to go to work, all that kind of stuff. Um, get back into society instead of being stuck in your house because you're too big to move. Um, all great. But then if you go to the last 10 seconds. 
eight, people would always like, oh, you look so good, Dave. But in my mind, I felt like I wasn't good enough and disgusting. That was it. That's all we got there. So even though this guy lost 400 pounds, or some huge amount of weight, and he looked fantastic, and he was healthy, and he was able to get back into society, psychologically, he was still not in a good place. Um, he said he still felt disgusting. And instead of acting on that in a positive way, it just set him off into a further level of depression where he then just rebounded and rebounded hard and uh, just going and becoming sedentary and binge eating once again. So this is where something where training somebody to do the exercises to was it move more eat less boom that worked that worked a treat. If you want to gain weight eat more move less. He absolutely owned those two aspects but what that aspects of health and fitness massively completely ignores is the psychological aspect. If your mind is not in the right place to be able to observe your own physical achievements, to appreciate where you are, um, and to appreciate your, your, your changing health situations, and you just end up with still massively negative internal turmoil, then you're inevitably, ine inevitably bound to rebound. And that's one of the saddest things I think about this, is something which this guy, not only did he need a physical trainer, a dietitian, a motivator to do all that, but serious amounts of therapy and psychology and continuing therapy and continuing psychology uh, and support, mental support, even after you've lost the weight. So, and, uh, and I think this may be the case with a lot of the people who are on that TV show, The, the Greatest Loser, The Biggest Loser, uh, the TV show that um, people try to lose as much weight as possible. And a lot of people, after they've finished that show, rebound and get fat again. And there's a lot of blame on, oh, metabolic slowdown. But a lot of it is also down to, like, there's some people that have done it and have managed to keep the weight off. And it's because they're in a psychologically stable environment. When you're in an environment which is obesity supporting um, and uh, mentally challenging, there's almost no chance. There's almost no, you've got to, I just don't know how. I don't know how. I think every weight loss program, weight loss company out there um, that's making money out of people losing weight really also needs to enhance its ability to promote the positive aspects of psychology within weight loss. It's not just calories in, calories out. It is. But the long-term goals, and when I say long-term, we're talking about two years, three years, to gain 400 pounds. The long-term goals massively need extreme psychological support. So yeah, David, um, good luck. He's back on his show. He's got another personal trainer and you just hope that this personal trainer is not just giving him some exercises, but is also a psychologist at the same time. Maybe the best weight loss professionals out there, maybe they don't know their exercises very well. Maybe they don't even know their diets very well, but maybe they know their psychology. That's the way forward.